What's up gamers? It's your boy Timothy Keller. Welcome back to another episode of Jesus! Are you Timothy Keller? Yeah. It's my alibi. Your alibi? Yeah. I think you mean your... <laughs> What's the word? Uh, your alibi is like your excuse for why you're not guilty. It's my alibi. Oh my goodness. You guys know what the word is. Tell us in the comments what the word I'm thinking of is. Hello, everyone. Tell us why I'm Timothy Keller. Do that. Today is... I'm not Timothy Keller. May 26th. And we are reflecting on our prayer recollection from John 2. I raised my hand. 13 through 22. I raised my hand. Uh, call on me. Yes, Timothy. Uh, I could be Timothy Keller if I publish books under the name Timothy Keller. Yeah. Literally, there's no one to stop me. Right. You can't copyright a name. It's true. Like, not gonna say it, but, like, not to be that guy, but I think I'm Timothy Keller. So, to be that guy. Exactly. To be that guy? <laughs> well, I'm not trying to be that guy. It just happens. Okay, guys, we have a really exciting story. Are you ready? Can I comment on something else first? Sure. Can I get all of this my comments out of the way? Yeah, do it. I think it's funny that we're so far apart because it's like evenly spaced out like you, me, Jesus. Jesus. You're between me and Jesus. Yes. What? This is the orders from best to worst. That was a joke. Martha, you can be in the middle. I'm the worst. No, I'm the worst. This is the order from most to least Jesus, see? <laughs> it skips over me. It's like, whoo! Did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, I think that's it. Alright. Here we go. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. You can just commentary right in wherever you want, okay? Chloe left. Chloe was here a minute ago. We thought she was going to stay with us. She was behind the camera. I think I need to touch the Chloe left off here, so. Did I get it? Yeah. Were you guys scared? Don't worry. They weren't really my lips. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. It was nearly time for the Jewish... I didn't even get to answer today. Uh -uh. Jewish Passover celebration. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. It wasn't me. We're going to need a minute. We started it. We're back. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle and sheep and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging this foreign is not money. Going well. Sorry. Dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. So we we're talking about who would you expect to see in the temple? Who would you hope to see in the temple? Who would you hope to see in the temple? God. God. People praying, maybe, teaching, loving God. See what you didn't know is that I'm totally Martha. Well he found dealers and merchants. Hopefully not drug dealers. Well would that really be worse? I don't know. Drugs aren't good. Drugs aren't good, that's true. Okay, guys, They'd get this. They'd be corrupting the church population. I guess these people are kind of too. Yeah. Okay, dealers and merchants. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. Go Jesus. Go Jesus. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. We're all going to imagine that for a minute. Okay, just so you guys imagine. Okay. Or do you want to t the demonstration? Do you want me to act it out? Yeah. You need me to hold it? No, I can hold it. Okay. So Jesus has his whip. And, and he's like, yeah. And the cows are like, ah, ah, ah. And the, what is it? Sheep. And the sheep. Ah, ah, ah. And then the other people, uh, everyone Bells. else. The dogs don't care about the dogs. And everyone else is like. And all the animals are like. Duh, 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 duh out of the temple and knocks down the coin and the cows are like ah, ah, and he knocks over the table doo, doo, doo. that's what happened this was a quite a drama and do the people watching again yeah and Jesus is like <laughs> yeah like that that's what happened let's see then going over to the people who sold doves did I do the scattering of coins yet did I say that part? I think I did. Yeah. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. 
Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. I gotta tell you guys, I just love this Jesus. I love talking about strong Jesus. I love when he's so strong. Martha loves when he's so strong. I'm like, I feel protected. He looks kind of frail right here. I'm not gonna lie. That is, but that was the he's strongest really moment of all skinny. eternity over there. He, that's my note. And he's really absy in the in in our crucifix, and we're not really fans of that of all the abs. We wish he was more. Like, <clears throat> then we also talked a little bit about what if he came into your heart, what tables and animals would he find set up in your heart? So, that you might what, would he, what would he drive out of your heart? Pause and take a moment to meditate on that. If that's speaking to you. And I find an element of trust in that too, knowing that he's going to help me get rid of the things you that drive are out the animals. damaging my life and pooping on my heart. Like the cow. I feel like it's easier to be angry than to have angry Jesus at you. Hmm? I think it's easier to be angry than to have Jesus angry at your animals. To be angry at other people's animals. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Then the disciples remembered this prophecy from the scripture. Passion for God's house will consume me. We're talking about how no one probably knew what that was going to mean. How about they had no idea to predict that coming, that that's how that was going to play out. But the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. Okay, what do you guys think he's going to say? Just a guess. You got My guess? guess was that he was going to say something like sassy and be like, do you think his real answer is sassy? I don't know. I would... I'm not exactly. I was like, maybe he'll turn them into tables. Yeah, you did say that. I if think it's, only. <laughs> it's interesting how I feel like that um, John set up a kind of a literary contrast here when he said, the disciples remembered the prophecy for the scriptures, passion for God's house will consume me. So he talks about how the disciples are seeing this through a scriptural lens of the fulfillment of the prophecy. And then the contrast, then he directly goes to the Jewish leaders and he does the contrast where they doubt him and question him. They're like, what are you doing? What are I you doing? I wonder what voice they said that in. Probably angry. What are you doing? Can you imagine? They probably think this system is a good system and they're like, what are you doing? Oh, our cows. Come on, we wanted to buy those. Oh, look, I got us all three and we're bigger. We're bigger. Jesus should be bigger. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's the most important. J Dog. Jesus is the most Jesusy. Yeah, he is. He's that. Listen to what he says. He says, "All right." Jesus replied, "See if this is what you guessed. Destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up." Can I be the Pharisees? Yeah, you be the Pharisees. What? They exclaimed. It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and you can rebuild it in three days? pretty good but now I feel like he's almost whispering this part or off to the side but when Jesus said this temple he meant his own body John is whispering that to us John's whispering that not to the us. Pharisees <laughs> not to the Pharisees not the Pharisees aren't whispering it yeah and I kind of think that John that Jesus didn't really want the Pharisees to get it that he was kind of being cryptic on person on purpose on person because he knew they wouldn't get it. So why directly explain it to him? That would have just been... He's just foreshadowing his... Death yeah. Him yeah. So then it gives his... Well, because listen to what the next part says. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. So they believed that he would destroy the temple and in three days raise it up? Meaning his body? What? Because what Jesus had said was destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Right. Is that what they were believing? Uh, yeah, I think they were believing that he was the Messiah. Like they didn't believe that until then? Well, you know they went through their time of doubt right before he died. And even after he was rose up, they went through doubt. But it says they believed what Jesus had said. So they didn't believe what he said at this point? Or is oh. it something else that Jesus said? Um, I think it, I'm guessing at this point they didn't really get it. Like, they believed, but they didn't know what they were actually going to have to believe in. What he was going to have to go through. So they didn't believe what Jesus said right now. Yeah, maybe not. What else did he say? Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. well. Um, and then I wonder if down the road, after Jesus was raised, if any of the merchants who'd had their tables turned and their cows driven away, or even any of the religious leaders, became Jesus followers. Like, how we know cool that would that be? We know that one religious leader put Jesus away in the tomb, and one uh -huh. religious leader told them to release Paul and whoever. Yeah. Was it Peter and Paul? Who was it? An act? Yeah. It's Paul and Barnabas, wasn't it? I don't know. When they were in jail. I feel like there's quite a few religious leaders becoming believers in Acts. That's good. That's what I feel like. And of course, a ton of Gentiles, too. Okay. But I just think that'd be really cool. And Jews. Like, lots of Jews. He was... He was... He, he drove my cow out. <laughs> and then I realized what was going on. Then I knew what was up. I knew it was tea. Yeah. And then he said the thing about destroying the temple in three days. And you know what? It was him. That'd be cool. That'd be so cool. That'd be weird. So, Jesus, you're amazing. I'm so glad you're in my heart. I love this story about you, and I'm so glad you're so strong. And I praise you, Jesus. Bye.